And this one is all about the fragrance. If we add up our five senses, our sense of touch, our sense of taste, hearing, the, the sense of smell is the one that is most closely linked to memory. So if you grew up and had gardenias in the family garden, you will recognize this immediately, but this is a much hardier annual than what we've seen in the past. Mother Nature doesn't paint many flowers with white. We see purples and reds and glorious oranges, but very few whites. And whites tend to fade quickly. They become yellowish or they look like uh, old dirty laundry. Well, even the foliage of this, was that a bad analogy, old dirty laundry, Katie? <laughs> <laughs> Not as good as your wife's name, but I like, I'll go with it. Yeah. So this is our gardenia. When, even when you just see the foliage, you can see that it's just kind of, it looks like it's gonna burst. And, it's a beautiful plant. And that's one of the benefits again of an annual is you're going to get those white flowers and that honey-like scent quicker and it's gonna last longer. Oh, and you know, we often don't spend time talking about the foliage of our plants unless they're scented or they repel deer. But I love that you spent just a minute talking about that because this plant will be in bloom for you all summer long but the foliage, that dark green, it is so mysterious and I really do love it. So that's something gardenias are known for and I'm so glad you brought it up. But let's be honest, we don't get a gardenia for its glossy green leaves, we get it for the flowers. And the reason we chose this patio gardenia is for those flowers. They are going to have that little button center. They're a little bit different than our traditional gardenia. I think that they're really unusual looking, plus it's going to bloom profusely so yep. it's going to be loaded with those velvety i mean if you've never felt a gardenia flower it's thick its petals are thick and luscious it's why they make corsages out of them all the time my mom's from the, the south in south carolina and this flower is the symbol of hospitality as you said it's a very big plant i have it as a memory of mine my grandmother had them on either side of her door in south carolina to greet guests and I, that smell to me, it's almost jasmine-y, yeah. but this is not that, that shrub. This one's going to be loaded with blooms, but still get to be a nice stately plant. It can get to be four to six feet tall, which is a nice investment in your landscape. Now, let's also talk about this. It is an annual, but if you put it in a pot, like what Katie has done, when it starts to get a little chilly out, you can bring it indoors. You can extend, an annual doesn't mean it, can, it has a, a life sentence of only one year. You can extend that if you put them into pots and treat them well. And, and I recommend that you do that. Uh, it's just, this is a heritage plant. This is one that every classic gardener has grown at one time or another. And if you are just starting out with gardening, try the annuals because you get more faster. It's, it's the microwave oven of the plant world. <laughs> you, you don't have to wait until the dough rises and you don't have to be the perfect chef. You put them in the ground and they thrive. Yeah, but it, and so if you live, let's, because I know zones are somewhat tricky for people. Yep. So if you live in an area where it gets below 20 degrees, 20, 25 degrees, you'll need to put it in a pot. If you don't hit that 20 degree mark, you can have yours in your landscape. And so that's what we like to tell people. And I have one, Dan, I bring inside and I keep it in a sunny window and it acts like a house plant for me. Yep. What a gorgeous house plant that will also bloom occasionally, not as much as when it's in that summer sun. And I should note that gardenias, even though they are that more of a tropical plant, they like the heat, they don't love that afternoon heat. So if you're thinking about where to put it, if you are putting it in the ground, somewhere that gets a little bit of shade in the hottest part of the day uh -huh. is where yours will really perform for you. And that's where it's going to maximize that bloom power, which is why we want it. They'll also thrive in, in higher humidity. So uh, if you do live farther south, Mississippi, uh, the Carolinas, it's a plant that does very, very well there. We've got 3,500 of these that are remaining and then, then they're gone. They're gone for the season. This also is another pollinator. Butterflies love gardenias. Uh, in fact, if, if you put several different plants out that bloom flowers that are pollinators side by side by side, uh, the perfume flowers are the ones that butterflies, honeybees, and, mm. and hummingbirds will go to first. Mm -hmm. 
And Dan, one of the big questions is, will I get blooms this year, whether you want them for your pollinators or you want them for yourself? And I don't know about your plant, but ours here has buds on it already. So I want to make sure people know, you know, what I have here is probably my, the second year. You know, your, your plant okay. will grow this year, but you will absolutely get buds, blooms. I mean, I have buds on my plant. It is ready to go. It's ready to bloom in those really bold white colors and as you were saying earlier this is not going to be one of those white plants that fades the flowers will not turn that brown and white plants in our garden yeah. are so fun because you mentioned they're more rare but also they shine that spotlight on that that area so a get atop this green glossy green foliage that white plant even though it might not be a hot pink or a color you think would draw your eye in the garden it's like shining a flashlight on this plant it really does catch your eye whether you have it in a container which i think too if you're doing the containers might be really really special or you have it in the ground it's going to be one of those plants that you are always watching always paying attention to because of that white flower and the fragrance and you don't just walk by a gardenia of this quality. <laughs> you, you know, the old adage, stop and smell the roses. Uh, you don't have to be reminded with gardenia. You will no, find you yourself don't. pausing to just inhale. And, and it is the smell of just pureness. It is oh. just, it's something every garden should have at least one of, uh, and, and getting more than one will not overpower your garden at all. <laughs> All no, right. it won't. And if you want them, you need to place your order. This is our final quantity of the season. We didn't start without many to begin with. And we are into gardening season. We are eight days away from spring. These will be arriving at your front door at the perfect time in which to plant. Should we talk about the, the guarantee? Yeah, Katie, remind us that the Cottage Farms guarantees happiness. That's nice. Yeah, we do. 